Hello, and welcome to another TRADOC Leader Professional Development Discussion. I'm Sarah Houck, Command Information Chief for the TRADOC Communication Directorate, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. Things look a little bit different this time around as we are here on location in beautiful Texas. Uh, we've got an exciting discussion today about how to mold a winning team. And to help us, we've got an incredible guest who I'll introduce in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome back General Polly Funk II, TRADOC's <laughs> commanding general. Uh, thanks for joining us here in beautiful Texas, sir. It's always great to have you here for these LPDs. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank you again for being here. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be discussing how to mold winning teams. And who better to join us for this topic than someone who is well-versed in doing just that, Coach Dan Quinn. Coach Quinn is a defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. He has led teams at all levels of football, beginning his career with William & Mary Tribe in 1994 in the Virginia Military Institute in 1995. He later coached the Florida Gators, and he has coached the NFL's best defense in 2013 as a defensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks, seeing that team to their first Super Bowl win. He later would lead General Funk's Atlanta Falcons to the 2016 Super Bowl as their head coach. And most recently, he was named NFL's 2021 Assistant Coach of the Year in his current position with the Cowboys. Welcome, Coach, and thank you so much for having us in this incredible place you get to call an office. It's, it's an absolute honor to have you here today. Sarah, I am uh, more than pumped to be here with you guys today. I have uh, had this one circled on my calendar for a really long time, so I am absolutely jacked to be here with you guys and to share uh, with everybody uh, across the world. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much again for having us. And uh, we've discussed building cohesive teams in other episodes of the Leader Development Series, but today we're gonna take that one step further and talk about the importance of talent management and how you find, develop, and build a cohesive culture with that talent. For the Army, talent management means getting soldiers into the positions where they can thrive using their knowledge and skills. Ensuring individuals are in the most appropriate position is vital to a team's success. We're going to dig into exactly how to support the growth and development of each member of a cohesive team and how to build a foundational culture through discipline processes. And just a reminder, before we get started, we want you to be part of this discussion. So leave your questions in the comments section of wherever you're tuned in at, and we'll try to get them answered during the event. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So Coach Quinn, the question's um, for you first. So General Funk shared that you've got lots of experience with the military. Um, and so could you describe the similarities that you've seen between the athletes and teams that you've coached and how TRADOC in the Army as a whole builds, trains, and recruits their teams? Well, I would say, uh, number one, um, I love teaching. And so I think that's really, you know, the part of coaching that I enjoy the most. And so how do some of the worlds um, coincide and how, where the similarities are? Um, I think it first starts with connection and uh, knowing that for us, you know, you're playing for something that's bigger than yourself. Um, and when you start with that piece first in our world, uh, knowing the man before the player and knowing that connection, uh, I'll feed your family and you feed mine, that kind of connection, yeah. knowing that, uh, you know, we're trying to do something that's really difficult, really challenging, and uh, it's gonna take all of us in different ways to do that. I would say to take it further, um, it's really important to find roles, you know, as yeah. you're part of a team, because not everybody's gonna have the same role. And so finding the unique things that different people bring to a team is the best. And that's why I love being on a team, like we're all so different and uh, come from different backgrounds, uh, different ways, the way we talk, the way we think. And so when we start connecting and finding out oh, there's a new way and a new way to look at things yep. and new perspectives and uh, a new energy with that, I love it because even year to year, not every team that I'm on is the same. Yeah. You know, no team stays the same from year yep. to year. So there might be some themes that stay the same, but you're still rebuilding that connection of if you really want to get great at something, you're not going to go there by yourself. Absolutely, and I think that plays right into how we recruit our individuals right now. So when we're recruiting individuals, how right. do we get to know the man before the athlete? Well, how it's a great that, a great question, and frankly, we, we our recruiters are the ones that close the deal, right? So they, they, they attract young men and women to come in and, who are interested but not yet committed, right? So what that, what that does is you meet them at where they are, where their humanity is right then, and then you become part of their journey. 
And as you become like a coach, yep. as that recruiter becomes part of the journey. And you, they, they always center back on how, how well that recruiter uh, sells the army, right? It, but it's not just sale, but it's also you got to live it. So and Dan's really good about describing, you know, culture and how he how he goes to those pieces. But, you know, he, he taught me a long time ago that you can take something like the Band of Brothers uh, culture and apply that across uh, any spectrum of what organization you're in. Right. But it has to be lived. It can't just be spoken. It has to be lived. So it's a really neat perspective I, uh, for us, our recruiters are the first connection you have to the Army and how well they are, they show themselves and, and really detail what it is it means to be in our great Army, that either opens or closes doors for young, young men and women. Absolutely. And we've talked a little bit about culture already. So, and you mentioned that there's some themes that do change over time as times change, the team evolves and those kinds of things. But what kind of foundational themes are kind of non-negotiables, non-changing? Mm -hmm. The Army has our non-negotiables yep. that there are core values. That those are never going to change. Right. Um, we've got to live them every day. Yep. So how does how does a, an, a professional athlete, athletic team do those kind of build that kind of culture, non-negotiables? Well, I think uh, first on a team, it had better be agreed upon by the team. Because if it's just a rule that I put down as a coach and say, this is our culture, it doesn't mean everybody is going to follow that. Right. So I think I can guide them in some ways, you know, <laughs> to say for me, um, some non-negotiables would just be that hustle, that tough ass competitive yeah. mindset that it takes to play yeah. really hard nosed defense. Right. Like you have to live that at practice. You have to live that at the game. And so you can't just turn it on, you know, on game day, you have to actually live it. And that's yeah. the life you live as a player. Say, if I'm gonna be about this life, I've gotta put out yeah. and have the energy. Cause for me, I can do the correcting on mistakes that could happen. Yeah. But I wanna make sure the top of the pile for me is that effort and that real dog competitor mindset to say, yeah. that has to be at the top of the pile. And then, you know, underneath that, just our respect for one another, yeah. you know, and how we can push one another and have conversations. But I like at the start of each year, Sarah, to discuss it with the team to say, what are some non-negotiables for us yeah. and how to, because if it comes from the player or in your case comes from the soldiers, um, sometimes it, it can take it a little further yeah, because right. this is what we said we were going to be about, not what Dan said we were going to be about. And so, <laughs> well, that's right. That's buy-in, right? Yeah. That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. And so the trust takes time to build. Yeah. We, we know that. And uh, you got to be consistent over time. But I think if you just keep saying this is how we're going to live here at work together, that's our culture, how we operate and live together. And so, like, I would imagine for in your world sometimes going away um, on a deployment, sometimes mm -hmm. that culture and connection gets even stronger oh, it is. Um, because of your time away, and it is, it is mm -hmm. just us. The and bond between the soldiers who have fought in combat together is a, a, unlike anything else. It, it really is. I mean, it, it's almost husband and wife-ish. I mean, it, I mean it, it literally is. I say this all the time. It's actually the most elite fraternity and sorority in the world, I right? Imagine. The combat soldier. And you hold each other accountable to those things. Right. You, imagine you, you could see somebody years from now and say, I was here with yes. him or and, her. And, and you pick up a conversation you, you had 20 years ago. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly right. I just was with a bunch of my uh, buddies at a retirement this weekend. And right then, we were all transferred back. My dad is the same way. He, he, he still has a reunion with his uh, air cavalry troop from Vietnam. He oh still gosh. gets folks from there. It's awesome. fascinating, yeah, the, that connection right. is, is like a team, right? You've been through, you've been through the, the gauntlet together. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And so finding moments to, to live that life together where you're yeah. connected in an, in an extension of one another. And yeah. so I think even when a, a good play happens, it's really important to show in my world, hey, this play happened because of this block. Mm. That, you know, like everybody yep. sees the touchdown and right. 100,000 people are rough, but it only took place because of this protection or because of the precise spot yeah. of the route or the quarterback had to just wait a split second before he was going to get lit up as he threw, but knowing that was going to be the difference. And so those small moments where you're able to deliver for one another yeah. and not just say it, but come through for one another, to me, that's part of culture too, to say like, 
I ain't just saying it. I'm backing yeah. it up and I'm living it with you. I like to catch people doing things right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So that's a prime example. That's the right block at that time. That's the right, uh, the right read on that route, whatever it is. I agree with you. You catch people doing things right, it's contagious. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that goes back to the foundation and the strength of the foundation of a culture that really continues to drive individuals to be the best that they can. And so my question would be for, for both of you, and we'll start with Coach Quinn, is for talent management, how do you ensure that those these athletes continue to want to be the best, continue to want to make that block to get our yeah. guys into the end zone? Yeah. And so and so it would be the same thing. Yeah. How do we continue to push our soldiers through talent management and leader development and training Great. and those kinds of things? Very, how do we yeah, good push question. them to keep being a, yeah. a, a valuable team member? Well, I would say first to me, it's... Uh, the roles that are established yes. on any team, your team, my team. And so oftentimes when a new player or a new soldier comes onto a team, they're not even sure what that role may be yet. And it's our job as the leaders to help that vision yeah. come to life. In my case, there could be a guy coming from college and they played in a certain system. And now here, here's what we'd like you to do. And it takes a little bit of time to watch and to give someone some some responsibility to see how they handle some of that responsibility and what are they excellent at. And so sometimes I may use um, what's your superpower and what's your kryptonite yeah, and right. trying to find, I can do this one thing as good or better than anybody. Let's try to feature that person in that role. Yeah. Now, it may not be the role catching the touchdown pass. It may be um, the backup linebacker that can play three different yeah. positions. It may be the practice squad uh, offensive lineman that uh, is help getting someone else ready. but. That may not be the role you thought about early, but this is what the team needs, needs. from you. Yeah. And to me, that's the probably the most critical part of the talent management because not everybody will be thrilled all the time that's with right. their role. Well, and I got a question on that too. But I agree with it that. is really important to recognize the importance of those roles, uh, brother to brother, yep. coach to coach, player to player, because um, if you have that mindset to know that hey, no job is not my job, and if this is one I have to do yeah. for us to win, then I'm down for that. And so you, basically what you're describing, in my opinion, is accountability to each other yes. and followership too, which are really important to leadership as well. So be, you have to be, a, in order to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower too. Yep. You have to be able to take instruction, what the coaches are looking for, what your fellow uh, you know, players are looking for, and the same is true with soldiers, right? I mean, we, we all have a boss, all of us, in the military and consequently you got to be a good follower too you yeah. got to have the strength of character to say yeah okay I, I recognize this and then hold each other accountable to achieving the effect right absolutely and when you do deliver on those roles and people see it yes they, man you'd be surprised how um, awesome that role can be and yeah. so this wouldn't have happened had it not been not, not the TV won't know and everybody yeah. else, but the people yeah. in that locker room they'll know that's right yeah. and, and that that builds cohesion. That's right. It really does. It, and, and it's, you know, that cohesive, the glue that holds a team, or the team, whether it be an Army team or the or the Dallas Cowboys, it, <laughs> that's what, I mean, or the, you know, that's what holds the team together is the co the glue of everyone in understanding their role and, and committing to each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Every good team that I've been on has been really good in the locker room first. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, good point. Your yeah, locker room absolutely. may be different but you can use the analogy of a locker room ours yeah. you know right. this small group yeah. I'm not talking the specific locker room right. itself but yeah. I'm saying the culture the attitude the right. camaraderie the connection yes. when that group is together um, that's the best teams I've been a part yeah, of yeah that's it I, I would uh, wholeheartedly agree with that so my question to both of you is for talent management, it doesn't stop, especially for the Army, it doesn't stop at our individual who right. wears a uniform. It's our supporting roles and our civilians and because the Army's one big team and every person's important. So how do we build um, a culture where we focus on the talent of everyone and kind of mm. be sure that along the same lines as the roles, everyone understands that they have a role, but how do we pull those extra people in and let them know that we want them to continue to be a piece of this cohesive team and we care about their talent management. So how do we manage the talent of the supporting actors, kind of the background yeah. actors, of, especially in, in, at TRADOC? How do, we, how do we do that to support our civilians or That's those? Right. I think what you gotta do is catch people doing things right and then celebrate them when you get the opportunity, right? And, and it's right then and it's, it's, it's gotta be fast. And, and, 
it also has to be um, can't be fake, right? It's got to it's got to mean something, right? right? You, your contribute. Don't let your contribution to the war effort be dictated by how close you are to the front lines, right? Everybody's got a role to play. Uh, just like uh, Coach Quinn was talking about, everybody's got a role to play. Your role may be be the person that tells the story, right? Yep. And you got to tell it in such a way as it brings honor and, and respect and, and, and reinforces the cohesive nature of our team. It, that builds that builds competence and also builds uh, the character of an organization. And I would agree with General Funk on that. I think the term that I would use is uh, gratitude. And uh, unspoken gratitude can often be seen as no gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's really important for us to recognize that's a kick-ass job. Yes, that's that right. That couldn't have been done better. Right. And uh, the way we throw a practice, whether it was the equipment staff or the training staff or somebody who right. rehabs a player to come back, uh, the video people that shoot a practice. So um, oftentimes our jobs can be just do this and that's all you do. But uh, recognizing uh, the importance um, that it has to do with winning uh, to me is really important yes. and uh, when we get chances to do that um, it's good and I think as leaders it's our job to also tell General Funk hey I, I saw this happening today I'd like you to know about it because sometimes the leader doesn't get to see around the corners and all the That's good right. that happens so it's, it's our job as a as a team of leaders to say hey, I caught so-and-so doing this I'd want you to know this yep. was, this was excellent and, yes and when we get a chance to do that it may come from him hey I heard you did something pretty good today. Yeah. I may have not been there or not, right. but just having that moment to do that or a text or a call, recognizing that um, is really important. It also builds trust, yeah. right? It, it, it just does. And so, you know, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care, right? Yeah. And yeah. so that, that's, that matters. And that fight that comes from that, say, I'm not going to let this guy down. You'd right. be surprised. Then what comes to say, you're the leader. I'm not letting Sarah down. Yeah, right. I that's right. I will fight my butt off to make sure that if something had to be done extra, I was going to get it done because yep. I know she would want it that way. And if you, I'm always so amazed at how you guys organize so many people. And I pitch about 100 people or 50 people. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing? And so <laughs> the fact that you can get it from one group to another group that's not in the same building but has the same energy, the same behavior, yeah. the same standards, yeah. uh, that's always something that's so inspiring to me. Absolutely. So my question to you, General Funk, would be, um, we've kind of talk, talked about um, when we're recruiting individuals, we kind mm -hmm. of look at those who have that little spark to, especially with this generation now, they want to be part of something bigger. They want to yeah. know that they're going to make a difference. So mm -hmm. how do we build cohesion mm -hmm. through those elements, um, both on and off the field? Right. Because, I mean, we're soldiers 24-7. Right. So, so it starts with our leaders, right? But it starts at basic combat training with those great drill sergeants that we have. I mean, you think about what we, what we commit them to, right? We say we want you to take citizens coming from all walks of life, all kinds of conditions in the country. We want you to turn them into soldiers in 10 weeks. And they, and they accept that challenge every time. And then, and they become the standard bearer, they and their compatriots around them, become the standard bearer for holding people accountable to these, as the coach said, our culture, our standards, our uh, values, and, uh, and our way of doing things, right? Performance-oriented training, right? So right. once you've demonstrated your ability to do that task, then you can move on to the next one. But until you get to that task, Hey, it's practice, right? Perfect practice makes perfect, right? That's what we're looking for. So our, our culture of trusting our non-commissioned officers to take, to be experts in the, in the human condition is fascinating. And, and it's so, uh, when you see it work, and it works every 10 weeks, you know, at, <laughs> at all over the country, when you see that, you see, man, this is the power of what of what certain individuals can do in a leader to lead ratio with with the skill sets that they've built over time in our organization. It's incredible to watch. Yeah. But that's where it starts, I think. Def definitely. So my question to you, Coach, would be, is there an equivalent within your organization, a professional sport organization, that would be similar to our drill sergeants that owns the culture and owns that first kind of teaching moment to really get people 
in doctrine to, yes. to the to this. And the onboarding is crucial yes. to me. It is, un, you can't underestimate it. And I think for us, um, I'm so impressed. Well, let me talk about for you guys first. That happens in 10 weeks and that those standards, they just don't allow it to slip. Right. And that's to me what us in civilian life do. Well, it'll be okay, we can yeah. try it. No, no, no. In your world, nope, do it again. And yeah. those points of performance training allow it to say you don't get to take the next step until you get to this Correct. one. You know, like learning how to ride a bike, like you're not a, yeah. like just because you're coasting, you're not riding a bike. Yeah, it's somebody right. just pushed you, you know, yeah, it's like right. you got, there's a lot yeah. of steps to take to get better at it. For us, the very best um, drill sergeants, for us, it, it's the assistant coaches, but yeah. as important, it's the players, the yeah. teammates. Yeah. And so the best mentors at times isn't really assigning a big brother or a big sister to watch over you. Hey, you know, Sarah's going to look over you, Dan, she's here. It's best if they, don't, they do it without you, me even knowing. Yeah. And uh, so we had our first practice a week ago, and I was so pleased to see some of the veteran defensive players. They were really flying and they were really trying to show, this is how we do it. Yeah. And I didn't have to coax them to say, hey, let's pick it up, let's show them how we do this today. And that yeah. would have been the natural reaction for a coach to say, let's show everybody how we do things. Yeah. So the fact that I didn't say that once and I saw a practice that had real speed, real communication, I think for some of the rookies, there was a, oh, fill in the blank <laughs> moment to say, this is really going quick. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, but I was very pleased with the veterans on that particular day to say, we have standards, they're really high, we expect you to live up to them, and we're gonna help you reach them. Yeah, and th that's what our NCOs do is for us every day, it's exactly right, you know, and, and they hold each other accountable uh, and raise the next generation, right? That's, that's what makes us different than a lot of different armies. Yeah. Absolutely. Paying that forward to the next, yeah, to the absolutely. next, to the next. And yeah. it's just, those are the same people that we didn't forget about 20 years later. Remember Correct. that drill sergeant? Remember that yes. coach? Remember that yes. teammate? He made such an impact as it goes. So yeah. I'd ask the second year players, I said, I want you to stay after today with the rookies. If you had known this earlier and you could have played yeah. better earlier, what would that have been? Yeah. And so I gave them the morning to think about it, and then after practice, they just started sharing these thoughts. Yeah. They, if I knew this earlier, I would have played better faster. I said, okay, so like, you have all this resource yeah. for you, but you do have to ask the question. So I'm about the rookie to the yeah, second year absolutely. player. And uh, these drill instructors who just have incredibly high standards, they don't yeah. allow them to slip. And they say, yeah, they're really high, but we're also gonna help you right. reach them. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of confidence that comes in that. I, I suspect that the people that leave boot camp have a lot of confidence. Yeah, they do. Because they have they, to go oh, they do. see the chest out. <laughs> oh, of it. yeah. As it, when you go through something hard together, yes. uh, that's really important. I think for me is now I'm, in my life, that's what I've learned. I like doing more than anything. It's like doing hard things yeah. together with yeah. a group of people. I love right at two minute at the end of the game and you're standing right on the sideline and it's about to go down and my <laughs> wife says, you're crazy, you yeah. know? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yeah. I said, wasn't that awesome? Yeah. And she's like, no, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> and, but that's the part of football yeah. I love the most. Yeah. When it's right there on it, we're all in it together. We know what we're gonna do. We've practiced it, we've rehearsed it. Yeah. But right when it gets the hardest and, you're, and you get that win, yeah. it is the best. Yeah. That's why I think that that, that relationship you form in combat is exactly as as the coach is describing if that's what it means i mean you and then in practice you got to share the suck right yes <laughs> that's what you got to do it's gonna hurt yeah <laughs> it's gonna hurt you know it's easy to be in here when it, if you're it's air conditioned and all that business but when it's out there and it's 98 degrees yes. and you're running up and down that field <laughs> you know i mean that's what you got to share and Absolutely. and that's why we do train in some of the most unforgiving places in the world junior uh, joint readiness training center down at fort, uh, fort polk louisiana yes it's in the swamps out in the mojave desert at the national training center out in graffenbeer in all the mud that's eight feet deep right <laughs> but what do we learn we learn to rely on each other. Right. We learn. We learn cohesion. We learn absolutely. We make our mistakes in practice so that when it's time to apply the absolutely. the resources of the nation, we're pretty good at it. I would have to agree yeah, with you, best sir. In the world at it. Yeah, that, that's right. But you know, you get measured every day, and that's absolutely. why this train. Why training is the most important thing we do yeah. to take care of our young men and women. What is the most important thing? They're they're well trained, and that they understand that. And they understand that they're part of the team 
And if they execute their part of the mission, the mission's going to have a chance, much better chance for success. Yep. And it becomes repetitive in nature. You know, you, you, why do you train? You, to, to give yourself confidence in your leaders, your equipment, your doctrine, yep. and your, yourself. Those four things. That's why you practice. Yep. Same thing. Right? And my question, I'm going to pull on that string just okay. a little bit. So um, we're training. We're getting great, perfect at the basic skills. Yeah. So our individuals are obviously they're reaching, they're performing at this high, high level mm -hmm. through all of that repetitive mm -hmm. training to perfect what they're doing. So how do we take those newly perfected individuals and be sure that we're still pushing them to be the best and that they're in the same position? Because sometimes when you gain new skills, mm -hmm. you gain mm -hmm. new knowledge that would actually be more helpful in a different situation. We kind of talked about it earlier about the small roles and how every role is important, but how do we be sure that we're soldiers is a little bit different, yeah. adjusting where a squad member may fit in right. a little bit better. Um, teams, it's a little different. You might be able to slide somebody into a different position. Um, we'll put them in a leadership role, right? So okay. you might be the brand new kid, but you've demonstrated some competence and certain skills and you've perfected your individual's tasks. Now we're going to move you up to a collective skill, which means now you've got to be the leader in making that execution happen, right? In making whatever that task might be. And that puts a whole di different set of, um, you know, um, constraints and attributes and yeah. things like that on you so that you can then demonstrate your ability to not only perform the task, but to lead the organization to perform whatever collective task you have. For me, I think um, often a veteran player, if you're a new player on the team, how is this person going to help us win? Yeah. And so when they walk in the door, they're wanting to say, okay, let's see how you conduct yourself. So early on, I'd rather put a guy on the second or the third team right in with the first group, you know, yeah. through the first or second week to see how they would respond in that moment. Is this moment too big? Can they communicate and execute at a level that allows them to build some trust with the other players? And that's right. important for a rookie. Yeah. They want to be respected, they, but you have to earn you it. you got to earn it. And uh, you're going to make mistakes. And I say that going in, they, we expect you to make mistakes in your training. But at the same time, by leveling up and seeing it just keeps rising yep, up. That's and right. guys have moments to say, I was good at this job. You give me a little more, I took it. And we had um, a player like that, a linebacker this year that was a good linebacker. We ended up having, okay, now he can pass rush. And we had a safety that we brought in, maybe could he guard tight ends. And then he developed also to play you know, a number of diff different positions. He ended up being one of the captains of our team right. who started off as a role player but by his will, his energy, his play style, his leadership, he became a captain. Mm. So that took place in a matter of three or four months where he went like this, but he had to have the opportunity and he had to deliver when the moments came yeah. and he did. So you mentioned opportunities. They had to be given those opportunities. Here at, at, as an athlete, it's a, it's a little bit different. You do get chances to run through those plays and prove that you've you've got it. You're picking up what you're supposed to be doing. You're taking on that training. Um, for TRADOC, how do, we, how do we give soldiers those opportunities to prove themselves? Because basic's oh, a little but, bit different. So well, how, frankly, how do we do that everywhere? One station unit chain, if you look at that opportunity, right? We're, the, the person we're bringing out, from that program, now 22 weeks long, 10 weeks uh, uh, as uh, basic combat training, and then uh, the advanced training piece of that, we're, we're using sets and reps to build confidence in themselves, right? And as they build more confidence, we'll place them in uh, the platoon guides, or they'll become you know, some squad leader, or they'll become part of the leadership team of their basic, basic team so that they can start to, to use their leadership skills. Right, peer to what's the toughest type of uh, leadership? Peer to peer. Right. And, but where is most accountability? Peer to peer as well. And then we, the the other piece is we what we want to try to do is we got to be willing to let them fail in training so that they learn the lessons, right. so that they don't fail at war. Right. You know. <laughs> so our, the enemy always gets a vote, as we know. So we got to we got to use conditions. We got to alter the conditions in order to make sure you can achieve it in whatever environment you're absolutely the task whatever it is and in the environment so we talk about day and night and we talk about you know some sort of suburny you know some sort of chemical environment or some sort of um you know haze environment or you name it some nuclear perhaps we've got to train to all those tasks so it really performance oriented means tasks conditions and standards and what always 
the task and the condition or, or the standard don't change, but the conditions is what, where you use variables to make it more of a leadership challenge. So you, you get after a different set of skills. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think one other part that's super important to this is the feedback, whether it's player yes. to player, soldier to soldier, yes. and if General Funk knew there was something that I was working on and he saw me doing that and gave me feedback on it, I think that's priceless yeah. because the feedback doesn't always have to come from above. Correct. Hey, you nailed that piece today yeah. when you said this, when you did this part yeah. of the drill. Um, hey man, that what's wrong? That wasn't you yeah. today, Sarah. There could have been more to this if you had looked at it from a different point of view. So giving that feedback um, to one another for really trying to develop one another as leaders, having each other's back to give that kind yeah. of feedback, we better be close because if you had said, hey, Dan, worry about yourself, then, then you and I aren't very close. Yeah. But if you had given me feedback, I'd say, hey, sir, I appreciate that. I'll yeah. try to incorporate that in because lessons or feedback or however we study it, that's also, a, a, to me, a critical part of leadership development. What do you think about, for, uh, we talk about feedback loops a lot in trade arc, and we talk about both formal and informal. You know, formal being coach to player, informal being player to player, or a coach hearing from different aspect of the team or something on something that's happened. Do you have such a thing or have you developed such a culture as that? I like to do it sometimes right after yeah. practice. Right. And say, all right, General Funk, what went well? Yeah. Well, I thought we communicated, you know, the one thing that we try to communicate on good. What's one thing, you know, tomorrow that we have to, you know, attack from a different space? Yeah. And I would say whatever they might have been, hey, we got to make sure we're handling this route right. better or this run fit better. Uh, what went well, I thought we came out with the right energy. So I tried to get feedback from them yeah. right away, but not call on the same people. So make right. it specific to somebody. Yeah. And sometimes if somebody's quiet, like, hey, I may ask you today, you know, <laughs> what went well. <laughs> All right, what went well today? <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah. this is, you know, so the guy's not like, I don't know. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> you have to know your audience a little bit. But yeah. um, I think it's important and the informal, um, yeah. The more you do it, the less it's informal. It's just kind of part yeah. of what you do because yeah. you're just developing guys. So yeah. I have friends, you know, on the staff or in coaching that would just give me feedback, but I didn't, I didn't have to make an appointment to yeah. do it. Right. And so this is how we do it. But yeah. there's others that you need to say, hey, man, these are where I think you are today. This mm -hmm. is where I see you in the classroom. This is where I've seen you on the field. Yeah. So having, you know, some points of performance in different areas of the job. You probably do it as an evaluation. Yep, that's right. Yeah. I do it. Hey, this is where I think you stand today, and I'll, I'll do that with all the rookies at the end of this OTA session. Hey, I think you're competing for a practice squad spot, a roster spot, or a starting spot, whatever that might be. And this is what we'll need to see from you over the next. So you month. set their expectations er early on. That's, I try that's, to. So that gets you into better practice. See, that's what I was talking about, yep. right? So now you know the task conditions and standards, and now you know where you're going to go in yep. the future. And that's if you're nailing really it in helpful. one area, I want to recognize it, but if you're also falling behind in an area, hey, I know you're going to study, I would focus my study time on this. Yeah. This is where I feel like you're, because we all like to you know, study and do the things that we're doing well at. Sure, right. and, uh, <laughs> that's uh, like, right. Yeah, but the part that you're struggling at, I see here, and yeah. you're not at a world-class letter, you're not even at a NFL playing level at I'd this point. I'd be fascinated, uh, Dan, to see that because, uh, you know, we have performance-oriented counseling, and unfortunately, it take, a lot of times, it takes a negative connotation. And, and so the only time you get counsels is when you're screwing something up. So I've, I've got a stack about this high. But if, if we were going to do, and we're trying to get much more towards a positive aspect of the counseling programs and things like that. Yep. How, how do you do that in, in, you know, you got them, what, how long they're here, a couple of hours, maybe? Yeah, yeah so what, it's different depending, yeah. but if they're here for that hour, you know, even if it's during next week, I'll 20 minutes yeah. for one 10 minute break, another 20 minutes, yeah. I'll maybe spread it out over four or five days, right. where I just get that one-on-one -on -one time yeah. to make sure they know exactly where they stand. Yeah. And I don't know um, from a soldier standpoint, but sometimes from a player standpoint, they don't know where they stand. Well, yeah, no, that's the same. And that's same very true. frustrating. We could yeah. all be in that same spot. I yeah. wish I knew and wish I had a little feedback or I wish I just, you yeah. know, did I do something wrong? Right. Why am I not getting play time? Right. So I want to be very specific about where they are with their feet on the floor today. And that's a transparency thing too, I think. Yeah. I think that's one, one of the things we need to really think our way through in terms of our 
counseling programs is the transparency piece of that. We're trying to do that with the new performance uh, counseling forms. Uh, so we're, we're trying to do that, uh, look at more of a 360 view yes. and, and those kinds of things. And I want to see what, you know, what you're really hitting the targets yeah. on this specific thing. Right. And I'd like to see more of that. And you know, if I see it, a good play, you think we could see that again tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Coach, we could see that again yeah. tomorrow. I say, okay, <laughs> what about the one before? So yeah. I try not to just go in and kick their ass on a list of things. Yeah. This isn't going good. You're not good at this. You're not good right. at this. But I do, at the end of it, ask, okay, why don't you repeat back what we just talked about? Sometimes a soldier or a player may leave the office and say, this guy doesn't like me or yeah, I'm exactly. in trouble. Or, right. No, no, that's not why you came in right. here at all. And so oftentimes I'll have that repeated back. That's a great technique and frankly something we all probably ought to pick up on, right? Because right. you're right, people, people get, especially now, people take some of this stuff so personally that it can be damaging to their psyche when all you're really trying to do is improve a performance. Uh, as not, it's not a personal thing, yep. it's a performance thing. Yes. Um, the counseling that so think about when you were you started at William and Mary to and how you did counseling then to where you are now and then yeah. think about what a sergeant <laughs> is versus right. where a command sergeant major would be or a yep. you know broken down old general. How do you think you deliver that message? Well, yeah, a lot different. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think also growing up. Um, you know, when your high school coach or somebody ripped you, you say, yeah. all right, I'll see you tomorrow. Right. You know, That's like, right. yeah, yeah. yeah he, was, he was on my butt today. That's right. Like, okay, well, like what time's practice tomorrow? You exactly. didn't get upset right. as much. It was just maybe part of how yeah. we did things. But I think today the messaging of where somebody is at um, is really important. Yeah. I think it's, you said this earlier, to meet somebody where they are. Yeah. Um, generally, if things aren't going good, there's some tension anyway. Yeah. And, uh, if things aren't going good, some of the emotions that's there are anger and frustration. Right. And so to throw that on top of that is good. And Man. so sometimes it's best to start, hey, what's, what's going on away from here? Right. You know, is there anything away from here that could be affecting your performance right. here? And you'd be surprised just trying to diffuse it. Yeah. You know, yeah, there is some things going on. Let's talk about those first and then we'll get into the football part of things. Interesting. I call that being positively intrusive. <laughs> I do. Because <laughs> what you're trying one. to do is get into their lives a little bit yeah. and know what, what, and we, you know, it's great that, to hear you say that from a football aspect because Absolutely. that's what we're trying to coach in Tradoc now is, hey, get into their lives a little bit. You know, I use those little coin things as ammunition in the yep. information fight, right? I'm trying to find a, so I asked two questions. Why'd you join our army? Why do you want to continue to serve? And the reason I do that is to be a bit intrusive. I want to know what yeah. may, what motivates you to be do what we're doing. And so you you must do something very similar. I do. And you don't the, have cool coins like I that. don't. <laughs> I know, and they have to be earned. Yeah, which I that's think right. That is very cool. So um, finding ways to connect, knowing yeah. that not everybody is exactly the same, is important. Yeah. And um, it takes time to build that trust. So we had a player, um, two new players this year. One trust was easy and that's probably more like I am I'm um, quick to trust um, but I don't always forgive so easily right and uh, there was another player who took a long time to trust but then at the end so much so you know three or four months later text did, did you see this play did you watch this one but early on it was yes coach no yeah. it just took him longer so I think not everybody just drinks the Kool-Aid Right, right away. It's a great point, and we need to remember that in the army right. too, right? Doesn't I mean, mean they're bad. You yeah, know, doesn't guy mean they're or bad gal. folks. It's, they're no. just they right. all come to they it wanna, in a they different place. See it a little bit, yeah. But first, and okay, is he yeah. gonna be like this again tomorrow? Okay, yeah. he is. Okay, that's good. What about the next day? Yeah. Talk and, about receiving people into your organization yeah. really quick. And I know Sarah had this as a kind, of, uh, but I, you taught me that uh, on how you just do practice and all that. That that's really important to us. I think the first piece, and for me the ones who have to, you know, set it over, it'd be your sergeants is the assistant coaches. Yes. And so when somebody comes into the organization, I think it's important to onboard them. And so, right. you know, the senior ones meet with them first, all the way down to who is here the last year, like, right. you know, the most, not junior member, but newest member. And so having ways to say, hey, these are some things about Dan that you'll want to know, like, right. you know, his pet peeve is being late and not yep. hustling, right. you know, so like, you can mess up a lot of things, don't mess up those things, right? <laughs> exactly. And so 
having a way to say these are the really important parts of the organization. Yeah. And so for me, that was, I wanted to throw a great practice. Yeah. You know, the time on the field, where we trained, how we did that yeah. one. I just wanted us to go for it because I thought that got us the most ready right. to play. And so we made that a big event, you know, how practice looked and how it went yeah. and the energy that went into that. And it didn't mean it went on for three or four hours, but man, when we stepped across those white lines, it had better be crisp and yeah. fast and aggressive and loud and all the things that I wanted to see. And so I would try to measure that right at practice. But onboarding somebody to your culture and the things that are most important to you, if you get that part right, I think a lot of other things will fall into, into line. Absolutely. I, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. And we were kind of talking before we started how the Army and TRADOC has adjusted how we do that. The first two weeks are really just get your feet wet, get in here, understand the non-negotiables, and then we'll start blending yeah. in yep. where you fit into a team and get to know you. Because I yes. think cohesion comes with understanding the individual, like you said earlier, before the athlete. So how do you encourage your athletes to get to know each other and build that squad? We call them squads, so this is yeah. my squad. How do you encourage that kind of initiative um, with the players and even the coaching staff because they're yep. they are so vital if there's something going on with one of your coaching staff They can't give their all to your athletes. So how do you build cohesion outside of? Training yeah. and outside of being an athlete. I think you nailed it the first part and I took a page out of your playbook before we did any um, Plays and usually in the offseason you start putting things together. It was way more about let's talk about the offseason first Where did you do family wise? Where are we at? So what do we want to be as a group together? Yeah. Before we even talked about standards or that, what did we want to be together as a group? Then I think you add on the, the pieces that you want to accomplish together as a group. But if you don't get to the part of the person first, it's really hard to be like just as connected and tight right. as you can be. So for us, that is like through the years been competition. So those are always easy ways to yeah. just start the day and yep. bring people together, whether yeah. it was you know, crowd noise and shooting a basket to get your team together, <laughs> right. doing push-ups, whatever it is, just building a little connection with your squad. So I do it today where the team's split up on defense into three, and so we'll have a competition at the start. It might have been based on yesterday. It might have been pictures in the building, like for a rookie, name this person. I'm like, well, that was the person serving breakfast. What's their name? You've been here with them three weeks. <laughs> like, you still don't know, like, yeah. that's who their name is? Or, you know, I put a picture of the equipment guy up and say, what's his name, you yeah. know? And so for the new players, like that's super important to know yeah. that right. the support staff works with us, not for us. Yeah, that's a great point too. You know, like, yeah, yeah you don't throw your talent up. Like, no, yeah. you put it back into the bin. And so knowing that the support team is part of what you do, but they don't, they're not added on at the end. Yeah. And I think that's like those small things add up to say, all right, everybody has a role here. Yeah. I asked even the equipment guys, we got any guys on straying over at the, the bridge? <laughs> no coach, they've been doing good. All right, that's good to know because yeah. I wanted to find out if somebody was above yeah. equipment or training yeah. or, you know, yeah. treating someone just because, you know, I was the head coach or defense coordinator, get more respect than, yeah. you know, somebody in a supporting role. That, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Not What's if you it, really it want a good really team. It really goes to that question that's up on the screen there. It, you know, it talks about soldiers, but it's mm -hmm. uh, how do you make sure everybody's a valued member of your team? Yeah. That's it's exactly right. And so, you know, and there's a bias about women and soldiers and MOS is better than others. I think uh, it goes back to don't don't let your proximity from the front lines uh, determine your worth to the fight, right? Absolutely. So that's a great term. It is. I mean, you just can't allow that. Every and the and the chief staff of the army says this all the time. I completely agree. Is we need every soldier. Every soldier is important. Everybody's got a role. Everybody's got to play. You got to be able to play the away game. You can't yep. just play the home home game. But everybody's got to play. So every member of our team is valued. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have them, right? Yeah. I mean, it, we we need people to play their roles in order to bring about the synergy we're looking right. for to do whatever it is we're trying to get done, whether it be hurricane relief or taking down uh, another country. Right everybody's got a role to play there. Right, and I think you mentioned in kind of a more of a recruiting piece, people want to be here. We're recruiting individuals who want to yeah, be here. That's so right. ensuring that they understand yeah. their role and 
making them a valued feel a valued part of the team you mentioned that you do try to do that one-on-one -on -one contact with them we're revamping kind of how Absolutely. we do our evaluation yes. so my next question would be uh, how what do we see for tradeoff down the road to increase the because the generation we're recruiting is yeah. very value based very yes. how am i yeah. doing how big of a difference can right. i make so how do we how do we make someone feel like a valued piece of the team outside of the normal check in the box well, kind of evaluations. We, frankly, we've got to show them how their role is important to the team, right? right? A little known fact is uh, less than 15%, and the number's a little smaller, of kids after age 13 play any kind of team sport. So we've been talking about team and teams and what that, and so we're talking over their heads. So we got to go back and show them how their role fits into what it is we're trying to do as part of the team that that brings you know the whole joint position up right we have a role as the army to play part of that team sport that which is war which is why we exist fight and win the nation's war right that's why we exist so everybody's got to understand their role in that piece of it whether it be the the xylophone player or the armor crewman right, right. from a to z we got to be able to do those things that uh a, contribute and everybody wants to be a valued member of a contributing or a contributing member to the team so understanding what your basic role is is important how you get that is through your through your sergeants demonstrating what why it matters you know make it matter right general dempsey says that all the time make it matter your commitment to the nation and or and we just had think about we just had uh um Memorial Day yesterday, right? And you, you got to make you got to make it matter. So everyone has to have a role, and everybody's got to play their part in order for us to succeed as a nation. Right. That's what I think. That's what I think is so important. Right. And, and we we've done a good job in trade our defining roles. We we do knowledge, skills, behavior for <laughs> every doggone thing on the planet, right? We know what it what it takes to do whatever job it is. It is now communicating to young men and women why it's important. Yep. They want to know why. That's what we're doing more in TRADOC, is, is finding reasons why this is important, why you got to do these things, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think for us too, in the NFL, I've said it before, playing and coaching in the NFL, it's a dream job, but it's not easy. Yeah, no. It's right. very tough, yeah. and those uh, roles are often really challenging and really tough yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, General Funk said it, showing the value of those yeah. roles and why yeah. and uh, you can make a difference doing this role and pointing it out yeah. i think that to me is everything i think you said it best right there everybody wants to make a difference we just got to capture how they can be that difference maker yeah in that role yes. not everybody's going to be make a difference right. in everything There's that's right lots of things that uh if i had to do we would look really bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i say like okay that's not one for me yeah. but this part, I know, yeah, inside exactly. And I can teach it, I can get there, I can help you grow into that space. If it was um, a different role, that I'd, I'd have a you know, much harder time. If you and I had to talk math right now, I'd say, <laughs> exactly I'd right. really, I'd struggle. Algebra and geometry, you know, like, no same as, same I'm as I'm right me. there, I'm a word person. <laughs> math is not my strong suit, so, so I feel yeah. you on that. <laughs> yeah, so, but it doesn't, the roles, um, it doesn't happen just like that. Right. So I think um, what you think may be to start it could be different as you go and like, man, I didn't even know I was good at this particular thing. And somebody becomes exceptional at it. And that's really what leaders are designed to do. Catch it, find those, what, what you, uh, you talked about, the strengths of your soldiers and put them towards the roles that are going to make them yeah. successful, right? Everybody wants to succeed in life, right? Yeah. right? The things so, they can do, not the things they Exactly. That's, that's, yeah. that's kind of the best balance of a leader to me is saying, Okay, I have a good vision of how we can utilize the personnel yes. that we have to That's go right. win this war, win this game, yep. win this moment based on who we have. Correct. I think that's right. That's yeah. all talent management right there in a nutshell, really. Absolutely. Working to your people's strengths. Yep. Absolutely. And we both, everyone has mentioned that performing as either a warrior athlete or as a professional athlete, this level is tough. Yep. It is tough to get here as a professional athlete. It is tough to perform and understand that you shoulder such a big responsibility when you put on this uniform and mm -hmm. raise your right hand. So 
What kind of tricks do and tips and training does your team do to make resilient individuals to be sure that they continue to find success um, and not kind of get run down? We have H2F and we're teaching right. those resiliency mm -hmm. pieces. So my question would be to both of you, how are you building resilient professional athletes to compete at this level? Mm. And how are you building yeah. warrior athletes to compete yeah. and be able to fight and win nations wars right. at this level? So coach. I would say for us, first off from the resiliency part, like put them into difficult training environments. And uh, okay, like in the past, it might've been uh, the starting quarterback in a two minute drill, he is out. Put somebody else in to say, okay, are, do we still have the same level of confidence? And so putting different people in roles, maybe they weren't with the first group, now they are and they have to perform at that level. And the other people around them, okay, we got a new person here with us. How are we gonna make sure whether it's extra communication, do we have to help somebody? Those to me are top of the pile to have resilience. And then the next piece of that is like from the neck up, you know, our yeah. mindset of how we go into things to say, do we mope or complain right. about it or to say, hey, this is exactly where we stand and this is what we now need to go do to win. And so to me, putting the team into mm -hmm. difficult spots is a good way to do it. Do a two minute mm -hmm. drill and you're down eight. Mm -hmm. You got to score and get a two point conversion and putting yourself into those training environments um, mm -hmm. is where it's at the best and constantly quizzing and testing to do that. But put them into, into the spots on the field where yeah. they have to practice against one another and perform at a high level. I think that's resilience for us. And then inside, how are we going to act when those moments of adversity come? Because they are 100% in <laughs> athletics, coming. they are coming. They're coming. And so I can't speak on the soldier <laughs> no, side, they, but they come the adversity all the time. is definitely coming. And so yeah. knowing that's going to happen, how do we respond together? Yeah. Like, bring it, where is it? Is it around the corner? Like, okay, yep. that's all it is. You know, even in training, I would hope, you know, <laughs> yell back at the strength and conditioning. Is that all you got today? Yeah. You know, like more of like, bring it on. And uh, mm -hmm. when you have those mindsets to go, um, that's to me where the best teams I've been a part of really had that uh, attitude group together. We're going to be very hard to beat because it didn't just beat me. You have to beat all these people yeah, standing right. around me. And so like that energy that takes place when you step out onto the field saying, you might be me like, but all these guys that are with me, like you can't take all of us. Yeah. And uh, there's an awesome feeling with that. And I know you guys live that life, <laughs> but uh, that to me puts into the resilience. You better train it because if you just call on it on game day, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. Well, you, it, it, it's not much different, right? Other than you learn through significant emotional experiences or repetition, right? So that, that, that builds you the confidence. And then what builds you the resiliency is understanding your training, your, your doctrine, your, your equipment, and yourself, right? You, so that gives you a mm -hmm. resilient piece of that. And then from that, where you, with your confidence and now your ability to, uh, to get some resilient actions, you definitely, you definitely rely on one another. It's just as, as Dan just said, it, it, it's much more about you can't take all of us. It really is. And then you walk with a little swagger, right? This is my squad. These right. are my people. And that's the way it works. It, it does. It doesn't matter whether it's war or football. In, in the trenches is where it's won and lost, right? And that's what we say. And then from that is understanding that our, our diversity is our strength, right? From, our, from, a, from an Army standpoint, you know, I, I can't tell you how number of times I've seen that there are diverse set of skills, uh, you know, whether it be ethnicity or whatever it is, our diversity gives us the strength to do, apply to a resource to any problem set. That's what makes us incredibly resilient as an organization. As individuals, you get that from your inner self. What is that inner belief that you want to go to when the chips are all down? What is it? Is it grit? It could be. Is it, a, is it a religious purpose, perhaps? Is it some sort, of, uh, some sort of mindfulness thing that brings you back to your center, right? Is it some sort of whatever it be, uh, those things make you resilient in the moment, and you have to find those. Some of those are personal. An organization will be yeah. resilient. Oh, yeah. uh, certainly our great army is resilient uh, uh, through all kinds of different adversity, and, the, and, it, and it, and the organization perpetuates itself, right? So raising it up to a standard that you want it, want it to be at uh, takes perseverance, yep. 
and it takes all of those great Army values that we have, uh, all of us kind of holding each other accountable to those. Yeah. Training partners help. Absolutely. You're resilient, to get, like, I am not going to let General That's down. right, I, it, it's I your, won't. who is, I'll, I'll that's fall not going to happen. I'll let him down, like it that's won't right. happen. So like exactly. having other people to do hard things yep. with, I think that's good, that's why you can go further yep. when you're training, oh, I'll go jogging myself, like I don't really feel that great now, right. go out with somebody, yeah. like, it'll make a difference. And that's why this is my squad is so important, yes. right? That's Absolutely. our that's our organizational yep. structure, right? We're going to hold each other up, right? Yep. Catch you doing something right, be a little bit, be a sounding board if you've got yep. an issue, right? That's what that's all about. Yep. That's what it means. That's what positively intrusiveness yep. means too. You have to know your individuals. You have to know your teammates. Yes. You have to know your coaching staff to understand Correct. Yep. what Strength builds and cohesion. And I think in turn, cohesion builds kind of that impenetrable, resilient um, yes. it builds uh, team. It, yeah, and yeah. it all, I think it all begins at the very beginning of yeah. that culture building. Yep. Um, and it sounds like the similarities between a professional athlete onboarding where you before you even touch this field you're going to understand our core values you're going to understand our themes you're going to understand what makes these individuals all of us yep. tick and drive and want to do the things yep. that we do and got us here that's the other thing i think yep. there's some key characteristics yes. between warrior athletes and pro athletes that get them to that level mm -hmm that are kind of non-negotiables. We're right. looking to get those individuals to perform at this level. And mm -hmm. I think it's, again, the similarities between the two programs, like the, the military bringing in, the army bringing in civilians yeah. and asking them to do what we asked them to do and then bring in a pro athlete who, or a college kid who may have only performed at that level and asking them to perform at the highest level possible. Yes. I think yeah. being able to just introduce a culture and have that individual like grab onto it just is really, it's really cool to see no how it's the best. something yeah, not simple, because really culture is not simple, but yeah. how getting them to buy in and understand where their, no, their knowledge, skills, and ability can take them within yeah. that is incredible. And yeah. I think the leader's roles in seeing where those individuals Soldiers fit. who are together, yep. players who are together are oftentimes closer than their own brothers or sisters yes, or anybody else That's and right. that connection that yeah. cohesion that they're just there for one another yeah. it's just different it's and a it's, bond yeah and it it's really not a, a normal lifestyle yeah. and that's okay we're not normal yeah. so that's, <laughs> right. that's, for sure. <laughs> that's for sure no and i think it's just really it's really interesting to see how these two groups definitely share some really common bonds on how you bring folks in and get some buy-in. So, um, but unfortunately we have somehow come to the end of our program. <laughs> so we're actually going to have to wrap up, but I want to thank you coach Quinn again for taking the time to join us today and inviting you into your amazing office. Um, is there anything you'd like to share as kind of a parting comment on talent management, cohesive teams? I think, uh, you know, culture is such a big word. And so, um, Sometimes people would ask me an environment, hey, Dan, you created where it's positive and that. Because I think um, environment and culture are different. Because mm -hmm. environment can be, there's music, there's good energy, I'm positive to be around, but culture is what you live every day. Yeah. Because you can have, you know, positive, you know, session around things that nice, a nice shiny place. But if you don't live that life that you want to be about as a culture, all the environment won't matter. Yeah. It's how you live that life together professionally. Yep. And if you get that part right, um, as beautiful as this is, if we didn't get the culture part right, the performance yep. wouldn't reflect it. And yep. so that to me is the best piece of all. So culture and environment are a little different. Environments, you know, the good things around it, but culture is how you live that life together. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, that is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I just thank you again for having us and for taking the time to join us um, today in this program. And I'm pumped to be here with you guys. <laughs> if you want to keep going, before everybody will go along. I know, right? <laughs> I would totally. I wish we could. This was just rolling. This yeah. was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, General Fung, I just want to ask you: Is there anything you'd like to share about anything else about talent management? What Tradoc's doing um, to really harbor those things and really make a valued individuals of each team? Well, I think every day we got to challenge every assumption. I think every day we got to look at uh, wh why is this generation dead? How do we bring this generation? How do we make them want to serve and be the next greatest generation? Our nation needs them to serve and we need them to, we, let's face it, we all need them to win, right? We absolutely have to, environment and culture, we have to have this generation that is willing to, st to say, send me. Yep. And so, 
it makes each one of us a recruiter, right? Because we, we need to do that. But on the, but I, I want to go back into my friend uh, Dan Quinn here and just say, I got a, another friend named Dave Bellavia, right? And every time somebody says, uh, thank you for your service, he says, he looks him back in the eye and he says, you're worth it. So Dan, I, I want you to know that uh, from me to you, you're worth the service and sacrifice of our whole entire family and the folks around here. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. I appreciate it. that. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you, sir, again for joining us here in sunny yes, Texas. So um, thank you both for your time and, and sharing this important information with everyone who tuned in. And thank you to everyone who did actually have a chance to tune in. Talent management is about ensuring we continue to invest in our people and push them to be the best that they can be throughout their entire career. The Army is a profession, which means continued training and leader development are key elements to building teams ready to fight and win in any situation. Building cohesive teams means a focus on each individual to include those supporting the core team. It's only when each member of a team is given the opportunity to use their skills and abilities where they are best suited can a team find the cohesion necessary to be successful. So tune in next month when I am going to be joined by TRADOC Command Sergeant Major Daniel Hendricks. Stay tuned to TRADOC social media for details on that discussion coming up. Thanks again for joining us. And as always, victory starts here. Right here. <laughs>